Hi guys, Brand here, and today's video comes as a sequel to a video that I posted earlier, which is Reasons I Tunnel, The Confessions of a Tunneler. So now we're going to be doing Reasons I Camp, The Confessions of a Camper, because I do camp sometimes too, but I want to also inform you for the reasons that I do camp uh, as well, because there's a lot of reasons that happens that's not entirely malicious, it's not entirely mean. Am I aware that some people camp on purpose to be mean? Yes. But for the most part, I do not think that it is the case that most people have a reason to camp. So I want to talk about the reasons that I camp. The confessions of said camper. So the scenario that I ended up in the most, which would be my first one, is that there's no info on where everybody else is. And even if I have brought an info perk, like barbecue, sometimes that doesn't even help me. Like I'll see somebody on barbecue uh, beside a gen and I'll go walk over there. And by the time I'm over there, they've either run away with an exhaustion perk or they have hidden and I don't know, I, I can't find where they are. And by the time I've searched over there, I've wasted a whole lot of time. At that point, I'm wasting time. And when you're wasting time in, in DVD, that's gen time. That is that is gen time that is being, that is happening in the background Why you can't find somebody that's being wasted. So you have to figure out how to enact that pressure that you lost because that person decided to eat away with sprint burst or because they decided to hide when you came over there. So you got to enact that pressure back, which is to, you know, come back to the hook and interrupt a possible save or interrupt somebody coming for said save. And that is one of the main reasons that I, I feel like that's a, like, that's like, it's pretty common. I feel like it's pretty common that that happens to me in my matches that I'll attempt to go chase somebody else, but they decide to A, immerse, or B, decide to use an exhaustion perk to fly out of there. And, and then it's like, oh, well, that's not, you know, by the time I get there, they're not around. And I'm the only person I know where they are is the one that's sitting on hook. And I know somebody has to be coming to come save that person soon, just because that's the way the game works. <laughs> so I just, I just come back. This second one is probably the the most prevalent reason that tunneling or tunneling. <laughs> that's the other video. I think it's the most prevalent reason that camping happens for me, at least personally, why I end up camping or proxy camping people is for some reason, survivors have this just mentality that, hey, I can come and I can. I can uh, just unhook in your face or hey, I I know you're standing right there. I know I hear your tear radius, but this is totally a perfect time to go unhook. So if I hook somebody and then somebody shows up for the save like really quickly, I'm going to stick around and pressure that person. You know, that's two people out of the team that that aren't doing gens. One on the hook and the one that's attempting to save, but I'm still here so they can't get the save. That's two people on the team that are currently occupied. That is a lot of pressure on the map for free, for free. It's free real estate, it's for free. So you get that for free. So you just take that pressure. And then that, there, that because that person can't get the save, a third person comes off and has to come help with the situation, has to come help get the person off hook. And then that's three people, three people that are not doing gens. That's free pressure, for free. That's free pressure. That's free pressure for no other reason than the fact that they're being greedy about the save. Once again, referring back to the other video, survivors make a lot of bad plays. It is not your job and it's not your bleeding heart uh, duty to try and make them feel better for making bad decisions. If they want to improve in the game, you have to realize that there are consequences for bad plays. We brought up this uh, situation with the uh, the tunneling video, but you know, when you're a kid and you touch something hot and it burns your finger, you don't touch it again. You gotta have consequences for your bad plays. And it's not up to you to try and be like, oh, poor thing, and then not do it. If they decide that they're gonna bum rush the hook and, you, and give you free pressure on almost everybody on the team, you take that. You take that, it's not a malicious thing. It's just you punishing a bad play, which is what you should do. It's what you should do. And I think this this next one is more of like a like a subversion of that last one. It's kind of like in like a like a asterisk, like a little scenario that happens specifically with the people swarming the hook situation is that somebody will come for the save and like I'll I'll see them and then they'll try to like bait a chase at a strong structure like they'll run at me. Like they're like they're coming for the save and I'll spot them and then I'll go, OK, and this is the next person I'm pressuring. I'm going to go chase them. But then they run to like like Pale Rose's main building or they run to Disturbed Ward's main building. And those main buildings are hell. Th those 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 main buildings are terrible for killer. Terrible for killer unless you're playing somebody like Nurse. Like they, they are incredibly strong structures and really easy for survivors to waste a lot of your time in 
and essentially make you lose by wasting a bunch of your time inside of those main structures. So I know that if I see somebody like run up to the hook and they book it, turn around and run towards like the Thompson house, I know they're going to waste a lot of my time there. So I don't engage in that chase because I know that is a bad move for me. That is going to be a bad play on my part. So I don't take the bait. Or my favorite, they'll like walk up to the save and you just like go to walk at them to like take the chase and they sprint burst away. They just, they just zoom away or they find a window and they like the way and it's just like, okay, bye. Right? It's like, okay, see ya. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted me to chase you so somebody else can come in and get the save, that would have been a smart play. That would have been a really smart play. But you wanted to bait me into chasing and then chase you through your exhaustion perk and then continue chasing you, which is just a dumb thing for me to do. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to chase you through your exhaustion perk and then catch up to you and then chase you there and waste all that time. That is not going to happen. But like survivors have it in their heads. They're just like, well, if you like fun, you'll chase me. And it's like, no, that's just, that's just stupid. That's stupid for me to do. So I'm not going to do it. So I end up, you know, proxy camping because I don't want to take a bad chase when I know somebody's on hook. I don't want to take a bad chase and like, you know, waste all that time and potentially lose the game. Uh, you know, how dare I? I'm, I'm terrible for that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just a dumb play and people don't like making dumb plays. It's, it's literally that simple. And the last one, I saved the probably the most like openly uh, intentional reason for last is somebody is close to being dead on second hook. Uh, if somebody it was it was within I would say like 15 seconds of dying on hook, like they're on their second hook and they're about to die, um, I think it's in your best interest to just kind of proxy camp that person out. And that's not really you trying to be mean or malicious. It's just once again, it's just a smart play. If somebody is close to dead. And you can confirm a person gone out of the game, which means that person can't heal, that person can't do gens, that can't, person can't get unhooks. That's that's really good for you. That makes it a 3v1. That's really, really good for you. You should do that. You should do that. It's smart. It's smart. It's big brain. You should do that. And, I, and, and it's like, oh, that was so mean. It's like, it's not mean. It's just a good play. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just in your best interest to do that. It's just smart. So much of Dead by Daylight, I feel like, boils down to these, like, playground rules of, like, it's me versus you, but it's really about the fun. And it's like, that's not that's not how that goes, right? Like, it's like, this isn't a situation where everybody gets, like, everybody gets a pat on the back and they get to go home happy. Like, sometimes you lose, and that's okay. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's a party game, dude. <laughs> so if somebody camps you out on second hook and your teammates don't handle the save correctly, like, who cares? It's just the, the killer doing the smart thing. It's like, it's whatever. Just move on and queue up again. Like, they want to win, too. You want to win. And they just did something to win. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, these confessions of a camper. If you like this video, make sure you stick around because I upload daily. So hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. But if I don't, I will see you when I see you, friends. Goodbye.